So what's up guys? So this video isn't so much anything based in theory, it's not even transliteration, it's not even really anything directly related necessarily to Marxism or trans issues, at least not entirely. Um, this is more just a story that I wanted to tell, um, kind of a slight vent on the issue and um, just because um, this has started creeping back into my um, this has started creeping back around the minds of a lot of my friends from back home and um, this actually ended up becoming an actual topic of discussion um, on Twitter a couple of months ago so I figured okay now might be the time to talk about this so, um, if you've been following me on Twitter and you follow um, some of my comrades on Twitter, you'll find that there was a comrade of mine that had posted a tweet of a old of a um, former high school teacher who was accused of having sex with her students. One of those students. Uh, at the time was 16 years old. The only reason she was not found guilty of at least the four other counts was because the um, uh, def the victims were over the age of 18. Um, that particular individual was a woman by the name of Felicia Killings who from what I understand is now an author and resides in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and has basically become a, you know, a raging far-right conservative, which is also ironic given the fact that she is African American and female. Um, but basically, what happened was, yeah, she, um, she was uh, accused of having sex with one of her with a several of her students, five of which were at least could be proven and brought to court, um, and four of those charges were dropped, um, and they gave her a plea deal in which she could serve um, essentially 30 days in jail and would have to spend the next, like, I think it was 10 years on probation, basically, or parole, whatever the case was in that situation. I think it was just probation because I don't think she took them across state lines, just across city boundaries. Um, anyway, she basically took the plea deal, which means she admitted to wrongdoing, um, was labeled a sex offender, was had to have her, um, obviously had her teaching license revoked. Um, yeah. So she had admitted it. But after the trial and everything had gone down, she had received her sentence, etc., she then started to, um, you know, basically um, start making, um, she started uh, making statements uh, contradic contradicting her plea deal in which she basically states that she was innocent and that she was a victim of an unfair judicial system essentially playing the whole thing of that oh this the US judicial system which is in its fairness is disproportionately unfair to African Americans and especially to African American women she tried to use that though as an excuse and in this case you can't really use that you did the crime you had sex with your students you abused that relationship and in the case of at least one of those students that is called statutory rape especially in the state of California where the legal age of consent is 18 
At the time, she was about 26. So there was a 10-year age difference. So that is illegal. <sighs> so, basically, yeah, that is what happened. She was a former teacher um, at the high school that I went to. Um, and she was a my sophomore English teacher at the time when... Um, well, she was my sophomore English teacher. At the time she was arrested, I was already in June, about halfway through junior year. Um, and I remember it being the talk of the school for about a year, because obviously with such a juicy scandal like that, you know, teenagers aren't going to shut up about it. And it made for good gossip and everything like that. So, um, especially in our town of like 100,000 people. Um so essentially yeah that she just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth for a while because no shit well apparently she wound up in atlanta georgia and now she is basically um and where she became a author um uh, pretty much bitching about how the system was unfair to her and how you know she stands by her innocence and everything like that completely again co going against what she had said uh in order to get her plea bargain which essentially means she took the plea bargain just so she w wouldn't have to serve the full sentence which at this point i feel like she should have in fact she should have gotten way more than just the 30 days that she had to serve and the 10 years probation, parole, whatever. But what really gets me, and this is where the slight politics comes in, is this is a woman that was a pretty raging progressive at the time. You know, the person that probably would have been like Black Lives Matter and would have been, you know, all that sort of stuff back then. But no, now she is a she's turned very conservative and um, I can't just help but wonder about that because typically people in that position um, tend to be homophobic transphobic um, and many other things and in those that particular those particular instances um, are the ones calling you know gay and trans people groomers and pedophiles and different things like that yeah, um, I, I don't think Miss Killings should, uh, probably try to speak about situations like that when she is literally, you know, a groomer and essentially pedophile herself. She fucked a 16-year-old student and potentially, you know, the students that she, that were 18 at least according to the claim, were, could have been even younger. And there still is even instances in which she still could have had sex with students under the age of 18. But obviously there was not enough evidence for those to go to court. It was just in those five instances. So regardless of the situation, she abused her position as an educator and specifically as an adult who you know it doesn't matter who made the first move whose advances were whose you are the adult you are the educator you are the person that has the power to stop that and you should have instead she chose to act on her impulses and that's why she got in trouble with the legal system. It's not because the legal system was unfair to her. I will admit that the legal system in America is fucked up and dis you know, is systemically racist and sexist. But in her instance, no. It was justified in prosecuting her. And she should have been prosecuted harder than she was. So... The next time that conservatives want to talk about this whole thing about banning drag shows and 
prevent and protecting the children and talking about you know all this crap about you know how trans and gay people are somehow the ones that are um basically abusing your kids nah you might want to look in the damn mirror because people like this who are conservative you know and trying to trying to say, claim that the system uh, you know has been unfair to them when very clearly they have done something wrong that's on you that is not the legal system that is on you so the next time that conservatives want to talk about this whole thing about the grooming of children and the pedophiles and stuff like that and they want to pin that blame on the gay and trans community they need to look in the fucking mirror because of people like this who they who they themselves are conservative cis people and in this instance she just happens to be an African American woman but in a lot of cases they are white men in those cases maybe it pays to look in the mirror and realize that maybe the problem isn't the gay and trans community maybe it's not the liberal agenda maybe it's just you maybe you have the sick mind and that would definitely be fitting considering that every time that a conservative attacks gay and trans people and tries to call it like myself for instance says that I'm not a woman the focus is always on the genitals so, who's really the fucking freak here? Just saying. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. <laughs>